and what is up everyone welcome back to the part 5 of this tutorial series on how to make a VR game with the Oculus Rift. In today's episode we will learn how to set the vibration and the haptic feedback with the Oculus controller by calling a single line of code. So without further ado let's get started. Ok so before moving on the implementation of the vibration I just want to add a gunfire sound when I shoot a bullet and you will see that it will come only afterward. I just imported in my project this Desert Eagle sound. So I'll just create another source component to my gun. I can uncheck the play on awake box and set the special blend to 3D because we want to feel like the noise is coming from our gun. Now I will trigger the sound when I press the button inside the shoot if grab script. For that, I can create a public audio clip type variable which will be the mp3 file and inside the update method we will access our audio source and make it play the shooting sound. Ok, so once down, don't forget to drag your audio file into the shooting audio variable and now we are all set and ready. Now, if I press play, you can see that the sound is coming nicely when I press the trigger button. So let's focus on the vibration, or with other words, the haptic feedback. I will first show you the wrong way to do it. If you look at the Oculus documentation, you can see clearly that you can actually make the Oculus Touch vibrate using a method called set vibration that you can statically call using this line of code. Well, my advice to you is to don't use these features because you have absolutely no control over the duration of the vibration by calling this function. And you surely don't want a full 2 second vibration each time you press the trigger button. I will show you the correct way to create a better vibration that you can also call with only one line of code everywhere on your project. Let's create an empty game object. You can reset its position and I will call it Vibration Manager. Next, I will add a component of the same name to this empty game object. Inside the script, we can now create a function that I will call trigger, trigger Vibration and that takes as an input a audio clip. We will use the sound that we've just added earlier to control the vibration of the controller. And for the second parameter of our function, we will add a reference to the controller that we want to vibrate. To create an haptic feedback from the mp3 files, create a new OVR haptic clip, we will call it simply clip, and give it as an input the audio file. Next, if the targeted controller is the left one, we can access ovrhaptic.left channel and call one of the methods in this class. We have Mix, which will add the haptic to the previously played vibration, Preempt, which will stop the current vibration and play a new one, and Q, which will wait for the current vibration to end be to, before calling the new one. So in our case, we will call the Preempt function and give it as an input the OVR haptic clip that we just created. Finally, we can do the same for the right end. Ok, so everything seems to be down, but there is still a little improvement that we can do here. If we want to call this function that we've just coded, we need to have a reference to the haptic manager class, and this can be really annoying and messy if we want to call vibration from a lot of different places in our project. The solution here is to use a static properties. That's right, you can simply write static in front of the function and call the function using this line of code. In our case, we will create a singleton. 
A single term can be used when we know that there won't be more than one instance of our script. And that is the case here because I don't want two haptic manager. If you want to create a singleton of a class, just add these lines. Finally, when you have write your singleton, we can now call our, vib our trigger vibration function everywhere using this line of code. And here we go, now my hand vibrate when I press the trigger to shoot, and the vibration match the th shooting audio. Ok, so now that we can make a vibration out of an audio file, what if we don't actually have an audio file? Can we still make our controller vibrate? And that is exactly what we are going to do next. First, we open the vibration manager script, we will duplicate the trigger vibration method, but we will now change the, up, the input. Instead of a new audio clip, we will add three parameters the iteration, the frequency, and the strings. Before starting to code, let me first explain to you how to create a custom vibration that will summarize this article from the documentation of Oculus. We can create a vibration by actually creating an array. In this array, we can put a number which will correspond to the amplitude or strength of the vibration. This number can be a range from 0 to 255. Secondly, the length of the vibration will correspond to the length of this array. And finally, if we want to add more spaces between two spikes of vibration, we can put a zero between some values and this is what the third parameters will be about, the frequency. Ok, so now back to our code, if we want to create such an array, we just have to use a for loop that won't go beyond the iteration parameter and in this loop we check if the number corresponds to a spike. If it does, we put the strength of the vibration and otherwise we put just a zero on the array. Finally, we have an error here because the parameter we are adding are integer and not byte. So for that, just put a byte in front of our parameters and we are ready to go. And here we have it, now we have created our custom vibration system that can change according to length, amplitudes and frequency. And we can call this method everywhere we want using this line of code. For example here for my gun, I will set the strength to the maximum value which is 255 and put the iteration to 40 and the frequency to 2. And now if we press play everything seems to work fine. And thank you for watching this video till the end, I also want to thank all of you for the lovely feedback that I'm getting with this tutorial series. I'm really pleased that I could help a lot of you people to make a VR game. As I have told you before, I really wanted this tutorial series to be specific to the problem that everyone can face while making a VR game and I think we have covered a majority of them here, but if you have any suggestions on what you want the next tutorial to be about, just let me know in the comment below. Also, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next video.